Thanks for coming tonight. <laughs> I, love, I love things like that. That's, that's good stuff. Uh, cool. My name's Aaron Poe. Uh, I'm creative director, as Michelle said, uh, at Wayno. I, he, I uh, lead up the brand team. Um, hopefully, some of you have heard of Wayno. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Um, so we have a, a, a saying here at Wayno: should designers talk? That's a joke. Um, another one is, should designers think? Um, I'm sure everybody here feels that yes and yes is the answer to that. I'm not so sure that designers make the best public speakers, um, but we sure try. Um, so make sure you have a drink. I'll sound a whole heck of a lot better. Uh, but tonight, seriously, I'm going to talk a little bit about, about me, a little bit about Wayno, show some pretty pictures, and uh, mostly I'm going to provide some insight about how we do things. So first, a little bit about me. Uh, since 2010, I've been at uh, ID firm Ammunition uh, here in San Francisco. Uh, I led brand efforts for brands like uh, Beats by Dr. Dre, helped them become what they are today. Uh, which, as you know, is now part of Apple. Uh, I also worked with other brands like Lyft, uh, Square, Polaroid, just to name a few. Uh, and along the way, helped launch many other tech startups uh, in San Francisco, uh, bringing their game-changing products into the world. Um, it was a fantastic job, don't get me wrong. I was working with you know, some fantastic people, brilliant projects, great clients. Um, and I, you know, I was comfortable, um, and I was happy. but. So why did I leave? Um, I left that cushy job because um, things weren't challenging anymore. I was just getting a little bit too comfortable doing the same thing, same results. Um, and I found myself solving the same problems over and over again. So I recommend everybody to move on after a few years uh, when you feel that way, because it was a great uh, change for me. Um, I joined Wayno in October of 2017. Um, and uh, if you don't know about Wayno, go check it out, wayno.co. Um, it's a pretty exciting moment right now for Wayno. The work might be uh, best in class, uh, and the design community has definitely taken notice. We're very humble, by the way. Um, the entire team is super dedicated, uh, pushing the work to unexpected places by asking the, the right questions. Um, we do things a little differently, uh, and it's actually quite refreshing. So I'm gonna just gonna give you the cliff notes on um, who we are, like who works at Wayno, what type of people uh, we are, what we do, like what services we offer and provide, uh, and then a little bit about how we go about doing it. So we're a full, full service agency. Um, these are our back to school pictures. Everybody gets a picture when they arrive. Um, and you know, that's the founder, Holly, right there. Um, he takes things very seriously. Um, no, but seriously, we're uh, 60 employees in New York, San Francisco, Iceland, uh, and uh, in LA. And we're growing. We have really, really big plans. I think the rumor is 200 people in two years, so we'll see. Um, but if things are going as they are, the growth is steady, and uh, I think it'll happen. So at Wayno, uh, we focus on three main service categories, brand, product, and marketing. Um, creating a brand, as you know, is very, very hard. It's about making people fall in love uh, with your company. To that effect, we offer brand strategy. This is strategy going on through the Venn diagram. Uh, brand identity, brand systems, uh, voice and tone. If you've ever been to our site, you'll see uh, the, 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 the voice and tone on our site is very emblematic of who we are. Uh, we make digital products, so things on your apps, um, mobile apps, web apps, TV apps. Uh, and finally, uh, marketing things. So marketing is about convincing people to do things, right? Buy your product. Um, we can be very, very convincing at that. So we make websites, do some advertising, and of course, social. Um, within those uh, three main service categories, we provide strategy, design, content, and technology. Um, if that wasn't clear, uh, we've decided to make a bunch of uh, like sort of, I don't know, educational videos about what we do, and this is one of them. What's a brand? Um, well, yeah, that's a really broad question. What is a brand? Um, 
it, it really isn't like a simple summarization. It's a lot of little things that make a brand up. A brand can be many things. A brand can be how, how you feel about a particular experience with a company or a product or a service that you're using. One O does branding, one O does marketing, one O does product. And the thing that's really important about that is that when people come across a product, they don't think about the brand as a separate experience. They don't think about the marketing communication as a separate experience. That's all one thing for a person. And so it makes sense that one entity is thinking about all of those pieces. Not a lot of studios claim they can do it all. We actually can do it all. If you don't have a name for your company, we help you name the company. We come up with a brand identity, a visual language to support the brand identity, a brand strategy to get everybody aligned. Then all that leads to a product or a marketing site. And beyond that, all the content that you might need for um, your, your, your marketing site or product. Cool. When you bring together branding, marketing, and product, um, the results are just insane. So when we just focus on like one of those different disciplines like this, it basically limits us. But once we start to bring all those things together, this thing just starts to grow and get massive and it just blows everything up. And it's totally, it's amazing. It's like a world stopper. Bueno. Right. Um, so yeah, we made several of those. They're all up on our site now, so you can check them out. We have a content team that does all of our internal uh, creations like that for us and clients. Um, so we focus on our brand a lot, like the, the Wayno brand. Um, and I think that that really translates to potential clients and existing clients, uh, and also you know on recruiting efforts as well. Um, so. One thing I do want to talk about also is uh, this idea around culture. So um, it's a tricky thing to define. Um, I think it's often more of a feeling. Uh, it's one of those things that's not really tangible, but it can be. So when a design studio has culture, it's rooted in values, right? Uh, and those values can often be seen and are more visible to everyone uh, by actions, by modeling behavior. So our CEO, uh, Holly, who I introduced to you, the guy with the pink background and the crown, um, he came up with these values. And they're not, they're not rocket science. They're not reinventing the wheel. They're, but they're very interesting, and they're different than, I think, most values that you might hear about. Rumor has it it only took him 15 minutes to come up with these values. Um, but I think it's uh, actually took him quite a bit more time than that. Uh, but some people still believe the 15-minute myth. So, I'll walk you through our values. We're all in this together. Um, we collaborate in practice, not just in theory. Uh, for example, I'm sure you're all familiar, I've worked at a place that felt a little siloed or a little waterfall where one discipline does this, hands it off to another discipline that focuses on this, and they can't do anything until that's done. It's not how it works at Wayno. So brand strategy is a red through line all the way through. The intensity and the ebbs and flows of that process for the strategist might, might dip a little bit and then rise towards, you know, once the, the site is about to be developed. Um, but it's a constant. So strategy, uh, sorry, collaboration in practice, not just in theory, is super important to us. Um, this is probably the biggest one. I think it's the one of all six of these that really sets us apart, and it's also easier said than done. Um, we grow together with honesty, brutal honesty. Um, but we kind of go beyond that. We're really, really raw with each other. We're vulnerable. We're open. We talk about all the shit. Um, if someone's depressed or suffering, we talk about that. We bring it up. We, we, we're, we're helpful to each other in that way. It's, uh, it, it creates a really nice environment where no bullshit is allowed, uh, and we get straight to the point. Um, developers and designers can coexist and, and, and live in harmony that way, too. Figure things out. Um, this one is fun. So like as a maker, I'm sure you all know, the only way to get better at making things is to step outside of your comfort zone and actually try something new, break some shit, fail, and learn by failing. Um, so Wayno is known for making digital products. Uh, but right now, as we speak, we're actually in the midst of um, making a physical, a couple of physical products, actually. Um, and we're not industrial designers. I'm not an industrial designer. I spent seven years at one, but we're trying to just figure things out and bring something to market. And it will be really interesting. Um, imagine what a digital agency does when they go out to make something physical that's more permanent. 
Um, and I think that was why we decided to do it, because everything digital kind of never really lasts that long. So check out wayno.store and Q4. I think that's the goal. Uh, bring the chocolate. This is a, a f open to interpretation, but you know, have you, who's been to Paris or Europe where they provide you with a piece of chocolate at the end uh, with your coffee cup? They don't really do that here. So you're at a restaurant, you have a nice meal, you order a cup of coffee, the server comes, there's usually sugar cubes and cream and whatnot, but not chocolate. When they bring the chocolate, that's kind of what we do at Wayno. You may not expect us to go above and beyond, but we do. We always over deliver. Um, we go beyond, never settle. We add surprise and delight. And um, I think um, we're just always trying to make things better. Uh, and we want to be the best at everything we do. And our standards are super high. Uh, and we work very hard to live up to them. And I think that's why we have a lot of amazing clients and uh, repeat business. Um, we're almost through these guys. Bear with me. Nothing here is someone else's problem. Um, this is, you know, basic. Uh, we, we pick up the trash that we didn't put down. Um, I don't care if you're a CD or an intern. Everybody takes care of everybody's things. Uh, you know, I think it's, uh, we succeed when, when people around us uh, succeed. So everyone's uh, pretty flat at Wayno, and we try to keep it that way. And I think it, uh, it makes for the best work, working relationships as well. Uh, this one's super obvious. Life is, sh is short. Enjoy it. Uh, a job can be hard. My job is super stressful. I, I, I'll admit it, but I enjoy the people I'm around. I enjoy the, the clients that I work with. I enjoy the challenges and learning something new almost every day. Um, and you know, life is sh short and kind of fucking ridiculous. So enjoy the work you're doing. Um, you know, we're all going to be dead soon. That's basically the <laughs> the gist of this one. Cool. So now that you've heard a little bit about me, um, a little bit more about Bueno, let's get into some, some work. Um, so the whole theme of this sort of uh, this work is, is, is make the mundane brilliant. So buckle up. Um, how do we make the mundane brilliant is what I want to go into. Um, but first, here's a logo wall. So we've had some really great clients. Airbnb, Apple, Dropbox, Facebook, Google, Medium, Reuters, Slack, Uber, Visa, some heavy hitters there. We've also worked with a lot of great startups um, that you've heard of or haven't yet. Um, but a logo is not your brand. Uh, our philosophy is that uh, brands come to life in the way we meet them, whether it's in a product, a service, a campaign, uh, on the social web or out in the street. And brand development is the design of all those components. Um, and brand identity for natively digital uh, companies that we work with goes beyond the logo. It's about the seamless integration uh, of products and services in the daily lives of your customers. Um, but what I want to focus on is not those sexy logo brands that we're all familiar with, although Slack is pretty familiar. Um, I want to talk to you about uh, three projects that are really great examples of how we've been able to help make m uh, the mundane brilliant, and that's in the B2B space. Who here works in B2B? B2B. All right. So Slack, business communications tool. Clear Motion is a, an ingredient brand for the automotive industry. Uh, and Checkout.com is a, a payment service provider in the likes of like Stripe or, or um, uh, Square. So when I say make, make the mundane brilliant, what I mean is that this is a category that can be perceived as kind of boring. Um, but it's actually super exciting to us. Um, the space is right for creativity, and, and we love creating value for business through the power of design. Um, sometimes these, these brands come to us with nothing, just uh, an idea, and we help the, name them. You, you saw the video. We help name them, we help brand them, we help bring them to life. Uh, sometimes they come to us as an established brand already, you know, two years, ten years, what have you, and they just need a refresh, a new way of seeing things. So I'll start with Slack. Um, Full, full disclosure, I did not work on Slack. Uh, this was launched uh, before my arrival. But uh, I can speak to it. What we did was um, uh, for Slack was help them with branding. I don't mean the logo. We helped them with uh, extending their brand beyond just the sort of GitHub repository marketing site that they had. Um, handle the photography and the illustration. Uh, it launched in July of 2017, and it's been copied ever since. 
So, as you can see here, um, beautiful illustrations of uh, people grabbing bits of UI from the sky and um, putting them together in fun and interesting ways. Started a trend, for sure. Um, but I think what one thing that we were able to do was, was bring a little bit more um, character into the brand. And obviously, you know, understanding who we are marketing to, who are we making this for, was super important. Um, so photography, illustration, web design, obviously, I think they handled the development. So it might look a little bit different than this now. But it was a super successful um, sort of foray into the B2B space. And um, I think it's gotten us actually quite a bit more uh, work in that space because of the uh, notoriety that it, that it got. So super fun way to show um, you know, a brand. Clear motion. So you know in the in cars where you have the, like the cool looking brake discs, this is where this would be seen. Clear motion uh, is uh, was a year in the making. Um, our ECD Robin really made this one come to life. Uh, basically, they combined the the smart software and smart hardware to revolutionize uh, the car suspension. Basically, it does to your ride what noise canceling does to your headphones. If that makes sense. So we focused on strategy, development, design, content, branding, animation, asset creation, everything, basically. So that's why it took so long. Uh, February of this year is when it launched. Um, to reveal how it works, we built um, CGI models of the hardware and created a series of interactions so that the user could explore, uh, understand uh, the value of the technology uh, and really sort of get into the geeky details. Uh, and then users can sort of peel away and sort of see for themselves how it works. So it, it was engaging and, and, and not just a, a, you know, a flat storytelling experience. Uh, yeah, and here's some more slides of it. Really beautiful. And it works on a phone. Cool. Um, the last one is checkout.com. I'll spend a little bit more time on this one. Um, so checkout.com uh, started in London. And they've been around for about 10 years. Um, and when they came to us, they, um, they basically understood that the market was changing and they need to have a new design language. Um, and I'll show you a little before and after. But they've, they've, in 10 years, have, you know, they've gone from bootstrap startup to a sort of a leader in the in online payment space uh, in the UK and by providing global end-to-end -end services to thousands of companies like Samsung and, and Virgin and Adidas. Um, so we were uh, responsible for strategy, branding, uh, site design, art direction, content strategy, uh, and launched in February of this year. So this is what they look like. Um, not terrible, but... Um, not fully believable either. Um, but coinciding with this launch, they wanted to rethink its brand and its online presence and essentially just needed to make it more visually uh, arresting and coherent, but also understand their audience a little bit better and, and speak to them, um, setting themselves apart amongst the, the sea of competition. Uh, yeah, so that was the only human being on the entire site right there. Um, and they had, you know, typical startup space and vibe, but they were 10 years old. So they realized they needed to mature uh, a little bit. This is, I know, a really bad photo, but I picked it on purpose because it's so bad. You can hear the, the neon buzz. Um, so at Wayno, we really love strategy. I think it's the most exciting part of design because it's where you have that aha moment. And then you gain trust with your client. Um, you look at each other in the eye, and you nod up and down. And, and they really feel like, their, uh, that you're their design partner. So we do workshops with clients. Um, it's best when the CEO or the founder is literally there uh, so that the key stakeholders are, are understanding the decisions we're making together. Uh, and the new CMO and the founder, they, she came over from um, like one of the competitors, uh, one of their main competitors. Uh, and it was just a good way to understand their business goals. Um, and this is where we use it, again, to get aligned, find out what makes them different in this space, uh, and focus on, the, on figuring out the best way to communicate uh, what they believe in 
Um, and looking at the competition, this is a bunch of uh, other brands in the payment service provider space. Not very exciting. Um, but seriously, though, looking at the competition is a really great way to figure out how they need to show up. But of course, like I said earlier, a logo is not your brand, right? So our focus was learning uh, as much as we could about the space they're in and defining their business goals, defining their fears, getting to understand the internal culture uh, at their company. Um, we do a ton of research, um, and our research includes the competitive space, but we also really like to look at um, sort of outside of their space at, at um, analogous brands is what we call it. Um, so we'll look at like brands like Thinks or Casper or Jetty. I don't know if you've heard of any of these brands, but they're in really boring categories too. Casper, of course you've heard of. Um, but who, who, who is able to make a mattress exciting again? Um, and you know, I'm not big on buzzwords, but I guess that would be sort of this like disruptive category, right? That basically means they're reimagining an existing product or service by creating new behaviors, uh, usages, or markets. Um, so in looking at their competition here, we noticed some um, themes. Um, and uh, so as, uh, as I said, we're, we're laser focused on, on their competition, uh, understanding the, you know, observing things and, and then finding opportunities for them, um, and also finding the key differentiator. Um, what are they doing different than everyone else in the space? Why, why the heck should you care um, more of the same? And looking at the space, we knew we had to do something different in this case, and basically, Captain Obvious, no illustration. So uh, because in a sea of sameness, Checkout is doing something different by providing their users with you know, more proactive, hands-on approach to helping them grow their business, there's like literally a white glove uh, service, they, they call it, where there's a human being at the other end of the line of the transactions, helping them uh, define ways to improve and augment their business. Uh, and that actually became a springboard to sort of the big idea for the brand messaging, the content uh, that we would ultimately make together. Uh, and this is how we start, um, design mood boards. So our process in creating brand identity involves creating design mood boards first. Um, in fact, we created a proprietary mood board API. Just kidding. Um, we did not do that. Everyone does mood boards. But in our case, a mood board is just a big sketch board with, you know, that we designed. And we open up our sketch files. And we're showing them, like, under the hood. We really don't care, we just want to show them everything. And its purpose is to visually explore and set the tone for the forthcoming site. It's basically a collection of random UI elements, uh, general type styles, text link uh, styles, form fields, button states, uh, you know, imagery, uh, photography. Uh, and as you can see, there's no logo going on. Um, it's just a mood board. And what this does uh, is help CEOs and CMOs and technical directors understand the sort of the vibe and the, and the feeling. Um, and uh, yeah, so we don't show them any identity or logo per se, um, but I think um, you, get the, you get the point with these mood boards is it's, it's, it really helps speed things up. Um, typically the approval process consists of the client asking us to merge all three together you know, like the colors from this one, the you're all laughing because you know. Uh, and then we say no, and we explain why. Uh, in this case, this is actually the agreed upon uh, direction. This is literally how we presented it for the first time. No changes, and it really um, helped us uh, speed things up. So we decided that because they've existed for 10 years, uh, and there was some brand equity already established, um, that what they needed was more like a revamp, not a complete reboot. Um, sort of like a sports team when they get a new stadium and they have to look sleeker and meaner, right? So they make the eagle look a little more angular. That's, that's kind of what we did. Uh, the word mark's simple. Uh, it's an elegant update that helped both legibility and recognition, especially at smaller sizes. Uh, the symbol uh, was updated to reflect more transparency, you know, the infinite connection, representing their relationships with their customers. Uh, and I do want to touch on that word, uh, relationships, though. Um, like I said earlier, when we're raw, we're really, uh, uh, we pride ourselves on being raw and open and honest with our clients as well. Um, we will push back and say, no, we're the experts in what we do. They're the experts in what do, they do. They know some things. We know some things. We bring those together, 
is when actually something great can happen. So as well as, well as creating that sense of trust uh, that only happens when, when, we, uh, when we bring the chocolate, so to speak, um, and we look at ourselves as partners uh, with our clients, not, not vendors. Um, so we, uh, we sold them in on this idea of creating some images uh, that were sort of visually arresting and beautiful. Um, and we use these images throughout the site to communicate key benefits within their product offering. So they're providing faster transactions in the competition. They're providing more tools for their customers to use and take advantage of. And their security is, is more robust. Um, so in a sea of sameness, that's checkout in the middle. Um, and it's, it really uh, showed up pretty well uh, online. Uh, these are just a sampling of the images that ended up living on the site. Funny thing, remember the angle, uh, you know, illustration, gradient, vibe I showed you? <laughs> we have that same angle on all the, the imagery. I, it was a complete accident, but it just happened to be that way. So um, once the site's in development, then we begin um, crafting a, a brand guideline um, because everything is sort of figured out by then. It's in development. You know, there might be some tinkering here and there, but for the most part, it's, it's ready to go. So there we um, dive into color, iconography, typography. We have really good relationships with uh, smaller type foundries that provide options uh, that, that are in beta mode, so no, nobody really knows about them yet, and we get our hands on those first. Um, and then we you know, document how to create uh, new content moving forward. And then, of course, stuff that will never see the light of day, but we show them how cool they could be if they wanted to. <laughs> Swag and stuff. Uh, and then here's just a quick look at some of the behaviors, more of a little demo of how the site um, should, should behave for the developers to go and code it. Yeah, much more pleasant than before. Um, this gentleman, who is a CMO at Adyen, you've seen their ad on, one, on the 101 freeway, the billboard. Um, he used to work with the, the CMO of Checkout.com, and he gave us and her a shout out on Twitter, which you don't see very often. Um, he's still working at Adyen, so that's good. Um, some design publications have given us love. Uh, brand new, Site Inspire, Type Wolf. Um, which actually was good for, for us, but also really good for them. Uh, it actually drew traffic uh, to their site, which was a win-win. Uh, so in fact, I asked the CMO if they, if they had any um, Google Analytics to provide about um, have we made an impact, because that's the bottom line, right? Like, it looks fantastic, but does anyone look at it? Um, so when we unpacked the data, um, it showed, you know, Daily views at 21.8K and then 27.3 uh, post Wayno, and that's an increased traffic uh, rate of 12.5%. Doesn't seem like a lot, but that um, quite, it is quite a bit. Uh, for example, Wayno, we try to have a goal of 2% increase month over month, um, which is a huge uh, success metric for us because it drives you know, new business requests and just overall awareness. So 12.5% you know, increase probably you know, uh, added a lot of value and new customers for them. Um, and their entry into the United States was a huge success, and we're super proud. Um, and I think we're still working with them. Um, this is all it took, these six folks here. Uh, you might know some of these Wayno designers, the younger kids, they're like little design celebrities. Um, Jenny Johannesson, uh, Troy, Andrea, Carly, uh, and uh, James down there. Um, I just pointed at the screen and told them where to put the pixels and stuff. So uh, six people uh, did the work in, in about under two months. Um, so yeah, uh, one more thing is, um, you know, I talked about how Wayno was growing and stuff and, and we're hiring and we made a, uh, a little recruiting video. Um, some of you may have seen it. If you haven't, uh, it's, Right here.
job. It's really awesome that way now. You should join us. Thank you very much.